forsaken, gather us in the blind and the lame. Alright, let's do this. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, back to the Uber Farmer Cigar Deck Talks. How's everyone doing? I'm doing pretty good. We're getting some pretty big wind here tonight, uh, which is good. There's supposed to be some rain coming in here soon, which is also really good. We've been really dry. I'm trying to make sure I don't pick up too much of this wind sound. I've got my monitor on, actually, to see if it gets too bad. Uh, maybe not, though. Maybe we can avoid most of the wind. Who knows? We'll see how this goes. For tonight, I have a new cigar, actually. Look at that. The Warfighter, hope this side's better to see it from, 5.56 five, millimeter. I've seen the Warfighter cigar company, tobacco company, um, kind of dance around maybe picking up one of their sticks and whatnot. And then finally, uh, the Cigars Daily, the company I buy my cigars from, had a Father's Day special. So I decided, what the hell? Let's pick it up. Let's get ourselves more fighter. Look tasty. The names are awesome. They're all named after weapon systems, ammunition. So 5.56, five, uh, 50 cal. I forget the other one is. I'd actually have to look it up. Probably 7.62. So far, a good cigar. Not minding it. Odd cigar, but you're going to find this kind of themed. Tonight, we have a very odd drink. Bombs sickle. A ready to drink cocktail. Vodka with natural flavoring. 8% alcohol. So you're probably thinking, wait a minute. You drink beer. You're always drinking a beer on this channel. What's with this ready to mix cocktails? Well, the ready to mix cocktail is for a significant reason. They're finally legal in Michigan. Michigan, at the time of this recording, passed some legislation that allowed for pre-bottled mixed drinks to be sold. As you can see, it's clear as day. It looks like a Sprite or something. Let's take a taste. Whew. What you'd expect. It's not a beer. <laughs> um, it's not really a, uh, what are they call rock -icles. They're calling bomb -icles. I guess I taste a hint of that sweet uh, berry kind of creamy flavor um, mostly I'm just getting vodka off of it <laughs> which is cool let's put the camera up so the sun stays behind the clouds so it doesn't really bleach out the shot uh, like I said though the reason I got it is to kind of celebrate that Michigan finally approved and passed uh, pre-mixed cocktails which they probably should have done years and years ago it's not a big deal um, so to celebrate I picked myself up a bombsicle when I saw they had it in the store. But like I said, the theme for tonight is odd. The word of the day, the emotion for the day is odd. Because we're sharing another EMS war story. And this one has a bit of a odd story behind it. And it was an odd call. And it was an odd moment in my career. I've had many of these, but this one really sticks out. Um, so let's get to the story, story time. Uh, it was actually a summer day. I was going to start off all, all odd. It was a windy and cold November day when the sun was up high and the moon was low. Nothing like that. Um, I sit at the station. Uh, a visitor comes in. Now we have our office is kind of in the front. Uh, that's where the community usually socializes, and then the medics are either upstairs or on the, in the back room, medics and EMTs, excuse me, the providers. Uh, so we don't have any direct interaction with the public. Um, as I'm sitting, I think I was making food or something. Boss comes in, he says, come here. What's up, boss? You got a visitor, patient you saved. Oh, no shit. Yeah, he wants to thank you personally and give you a hug. Okay, what's, what's the patient's name? Boss said the name. Ooh, I have no idea who that is, sir. I was like, can you give me any, any clues? Nope, not a one. Now, something you have to understand about EMS, 
we are actually trained to forget names. Um, because if I was to use a patient's name in a story or in public, I actually commit a rather large violation by HIPAA. I talked about that in the first episode of these war stories. So a lot of us train to forget names, but we'll remember faces, um, we'll remember incidents, we'll remember calls, of course. Um, so anyhow, I, I definitely wanted to see her. If there's one thing, a little secret I can give you guys, if you ever do get picked up by the ambulance and you're like, what could we do for them? What could we do to thank them for coming to our house and taking care of us? There are two things, very easy. We don't need a lot. We don't need medals. We don't need press conferences. We don't need letters to our boss or any bullshit like that. Two things. One, find a cheap treat. Donuts, cookies, even store-bought. Oreos, give me a pack of Oreos and I love you forever. Grab me a pack of donuts. Woo, brother. You're the, the best patient. I'll, I'll be like, I'm so glad you lived. Thank you for the donuts. Doesn't be anything special. Don't get like some designer donut. But if you can't afford donuts, can't really afford cookies, or you feel awkward buying food, that's kind of an awkward thing. It's become very awkward in the last year and a half to bring food places. The next best thing you can do is just show up and come tell us how you did. Tell us you lived. We don't know that. Uh, because of HIPAA, there's a lot of times we won't know if a patient lives or dies. Well, we know if they die and it's our fault because we get in trouble for it. Um, sometimes some of us will read the obituary, but I might bring that up in a later talk. That is a horrible thing for an EMS provider to do, is to read obituaries. So we're not going to know. We won't know if you live or died. Uh, we won't know if you got better, uh, especially if it's a tricky case where we don't really know what's going on. Um, swing by. Tell us what, what was wrong with you. I had another patient bring up in a different story where the guy actually cracked his scapula uh, lengthwise. Uh, pretty weird break. And I, I knew he had broken something. I didn't know it was broken like that. Um, but stop by. Say hello. Say thank you. Shake your hand. We won't make it awkward. We might not accept the thank you with like a exuberance because we get them so infrequently. But at least stop by and tell us how you did. Tell us what happened. It's, it's, it's an awesome feeling. I, I can, well, I have a story for each of them, but only a handful of patients ever stop by um, in my whole career, and only a handful of those handful stop by to talk to me. Um, stop by. That's a little, little PSA. Stop by. So if, you, if a medic picks you up, find out when they're working, the boss will tell you. Stop by. Just tell them, hey, wanted to say quick, you know, thank you for helping me. Here's how I turned out. It'll make their month. No holds barred. No, you don't need trophies and prizes and news conferences. Just go say, hey, you know, when I, I, I twisted my ankle, he came and banished me, took me to the hospital. I just want to say thank you. You know, yeah, it turned out it wasn't broken, like you were saying. Um, just want to, you know, let you know I appreciate you. Make their, make their month, might even make their year. So anyway, I didn't know who this lady was. Uh, I was like, not a big deal. My partner wasn't even worried. He's like, oh, you'll know. I'm good with faces. I'll remember someone's face. So I look at this lady and, oh man, I don't even recognize her face. <laughs> and I'm talking with her and she's like, oh my God, I'm sorry. I, I, I don't know what to say. I'm so shaky. She bought a, brought a box of Oreos. I'm like, oh my God, Oreos, thank you. Um, and I tell her, I said, ma'am, are you sure I'm the medic who treated you? Um, there was another medic actually looked a lot like me. We got confused a lot. Um, I was like, I, I don't honestly remember your face, ma'am. I'm sorry. I said, I explained I don't remember names. I don't remember your face. She said, well, hold on. Let me try this. So she grabs the sides of her face and smushes them together. I was like, oh, my God. I know who you are. You're that woman who had the horrible sepsis. And, uh, yeah, you were swollen everywhere. I was draining shunts. I was draining catheters. I was draining, um, uh, what are they called, the... the um, peritoneum bags i was oh we were pulling fluid out of you left and right like, oh my god you lived <laughs> i didn't know if you'd make it so we got a good chuckle off of that good laugh and then she sits there um, and i remember the call she was horribly infectious bad sepsis throughout no antibiotics were touching her she's uh, retaining fluid like no one's business um, and she was weeping fluid. I mean, the, the ambulance was just soaked with the weeping fluid coming off of her body. 
uh, but she was tubed and vented and on a, uh, a vent machine I was running that I was running IV pumps and fluids because as much fluid as we were pulling off we then had to replace it to keep her alive it was just it was a bizarre call it was a lot of fun um, again as I talk about the dark humor it's that dark humor kind of fun where you know we I got to do a lot I got to use a lot of my skills and, and had to think outside the box to treat her and I was moving moving and grooving So she said, she's like, you know, we got, I got down there. Um, they were able to get me on the right course of antibiotics, some uh, other medications to pull fluid off my body. And she's like, I, I, as you can see, I'm doing fine. She's like, I still in some rehab because the excess fluid destroyed some of my joints, but I'm getting stronger every day. I said, well, ma'am, I'm so glad you lived. And I shook her hand and I think we, we even hugged out back then. Um, and she said, I just have to know one thing. I said, ma'am, anything. What do you, what do you need? What do you need? She looks me in the face and says, how did your wife's book end? And I just, I was floored. I was like, excuse me? What, what are you talking about? How did my wife's book end? Um, my wife uh, is an author. She writes books. I like talking about her books constantly. Um, she said, you know, you were telling me the plot of the book and the story of the book. And I was so enthralled listening to it um, on the trip down. And, you know, you, you said she's still working on the end. And I just, I need to know how it ends. And I said, well, which, which book is it? Because a lot of people know that I, you know, my wife writes books. So I thought maybe she was pulling my chain. And she started explaining the plot of the book and the characters and character development. Well, so I do, especially invented patients, patients in comas. I'll talk. I talk the entire time. You know, two, three, four hour transports. I'm talking the entire time to the patient. I'm getting them to talk. We talk about everything under the sun and then some. It's just what I do. There's a lot of medical theory behind there. You know, if you keep your patient talking, you'll know the second something's wrong and you'll be able to fix it. So I usually keep my patients talking because a talking patient is usually a pretty stable patient. So I couldn't believe it. I was like, oh, there's no way. I said, you were snowed three ways to Sunday. There's no way. She kind of got a little giggle and she said, oh yeah. She said, I don't know how much I'm supposed to say. Uh, my lawyer hasn't advised me that much but you know I just to let you know turns out we give patients when we tube them we put them under we give them two drugs one's a paralytic stops all their muscles from working the other one is what's called the hypnotic or benzodiazepine uh, that makes them loopy and makes them not remember turns out the benzo that we prescribed or got prescribed that we're giving her um, does zero effect will not work on her so she was 100% awake in a paralyzed body the entire time she was in the hospital and the entire time she was in my rig. Um, and that's crazy. I mean, I've heard of that. The paradoxical reactions, the waking syndrome. Um, I have heard of patients having that happen. But this is the first one who actually confirmed to me that she had it. So I, I told her at the end of the book, I said, okay. I said, well, uh, you said you're talking to a lawyer. Why are you talking to a lawyer? Well, turns out the doctor and nurse, while well, she was in the ER, doc puts her down, tubes her, um, and she's trying to scream to let him know that she's still awake, it's not working. And the doc is like, you know, we might as well just let her die. It would have been better for her. You know, she, her life isn't worth living. Um, you know, she's, she's not going to do well. She's probably going to die anyway. It probably would more humane for me to just intentionally miss that tube and just let her suffocate to death and the nurse said some very horrible things about the woman's character the woman at the time weighed about 300 pounds um, turns out about 140 of that i think she said was all water that's how much water she was retaining um, i mean i think she was like a buck 60 a buck 80 when she's when i saw her I, so again, a good 120, 140, maybe more of that weight was water weight. Um, so they made comments about her health, about uh, where she was from, and they said, you know what, how horrible, it's just best off if she just die. Um, even when I took the transfer, I'm getting the instructions uh, from the nurse, and the nurse flat out says, you know, honestly, she's probably not going to make the trip anyway, so don't try too hard. It's kind of a horrifying thing to say. We do hear that from time to time. Um, it really gets to my my nerves. I really hate when they say that. 
Um, so anyhow, I get the report, and then I go up to her, and I say, hey, hon, you know, my name's you know, so-and-so, I'm here to help you. I gave her a good squeeze on the shoulder. I says, we're going to do everything we can. Don't listen to that nurse. You know, we're going to get you down to the hospital, get you treated. You know, you'll, you'll be doing all right. So if there's anything you need, you just let me know. Just raise your hand. Like, haha, a little joke. I know you can't raise your hand, but I'll try to anticipate, you know, what you might need. Again, I love talking to people. I'll talk their ear off. Um, I bumped a little bump uh, in, in the, the, the door jam. I was like, oh, little bump, little bump. You know, um, I'm just going to prop your head up. I'm going to prop your head down. Oh, you look like you're a little uncomfortable. Let me just adjust you there. And she said, you're the first person the entire time I was there that treated me like a person. She's like, and I, I was out. There was no reason you had to treat me like that, but you did. She said it was amazing. It actually gave me hope. You gave me hope. You explained the procedures. You explained what was going on. You were talking about my condition. She's like, and then you did the best thing you could have done. You, you told me a story. You read me a book. I finally was able to calm down and relax and mentally go somewhere. I went into your wife's story. And I was there. I wasn't in this tube vented condition where machines were breathing for me. And chemicals were coursing through my veins. And I, I actually decided I could live. I almost did die. I almost let myself die. When that doctor and nurse were saying that crap. I can't believe they did. Um, I, I mean, it just floored me. I had no idea. We were we were giving her a lot of drugs. She should have been basically in a medically induced coma. But she wasn't. She was awake. And she thanked me. She gave me another big hug. She said, you know, you're the reason why I'm alive. Just because you talk to me like a person. So that was, was just blew my mind. I didn't know what to say. I think I went and smoked a few little cigars I carried and um, had some a lot of caffeine and probably stayed up half the night just thinking because that was something I do to all patients, even dead bodies. I've had dead bodies I talk to because um, I love to talk and I love hearing my own voice and I don't always need a back and forth. I can keep talking. That's, that's like these. There's no one talking to me. So I just go. You guys have all seen this. If you watch any of my videos, they last anywhere from... 10 minutes to almost an hour of me just droning on. Uh, it's part of my EMS experience. My EMS, I don't want to say education, but my style on the rig. Just keep talking to them. Because of that, one, I avoided a lawsuit. Um, I'm not too vain to admit that that was a big relief. I was not the one being sued. And the nurse and doctor did get sued quite heavily, and they, they settled. And then two, I, I saved a life just by talking. Um, I have a couple of stories about my talking has saved lives in the past, which we'll, we'll go through, don't you worry. But yeah, it was bizarre. It was odd. I would never have guessed that this woman could hear me, um, that she was one of these one in 1,000 people who had this condition that they're basically immune to these benzos, these hypnotics that we give them. And me simply not shutting up, me telling a story, me acknowledging a patient. I've, I've done it many times before that. I've, I definitely did hundreds of times after that call or after learning that this, this woman was awake. She actually heard me. It really made me reevaluate some of my stances on life, death, and comatose patients. So just odd. Again, fits perfect. An odd drink, an odd cigar uh, with a really odd story. Uh, about a woman who was saved by a medic who wouldn't shut up and a medic who saved himself because he didn't shut up. And he's polite to everyone from uh, hardened prisoners to comatose patients to dead patients. Um, I'm sure there's some moral or takeaway you can take from this. Um, and I feel free to. But I'm going to leave it here. I hope everyone's doing well. hope you stay safe out there. And just remember, don't stop talking. Keep talking. Keep your patient talking. They'll tell you what's wrong with them. They'll tell you how to fix them. And if they ever stop talking, something's wrong with them. So you better check them out. On that, take it easy, everyone. We'll see you on the next one.